Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm at, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Who do I have in the studio with me? Helen Davis Chapman. Helen Davis Chapman, thank you so much for joining us. We want to know what you know that my audience needs to know. Oh, my God. The, your audience needs to read my book, J.P. Madoff. It's the uh, expose of the bank behind Bernie Madoff. And it turns out it's J.P. Morgan Chase. And without J.P. Morgan Chase's complicity, Madoff would have been a small-time crook instead of the biggest criminal in the history of the world. You know, I started reading your book. It's really a good book. I want to say that. But, you know, I never thought about, and, I, and we all probably followed the Madoff scandal, I never thought about who gave him all that money. So you wrote the book. Well, the thing is that under the Bank Secrecy Act, which was enacted in 1970, <clears throat> banks have an obligation to report to the federal government when they see criminal activity of one of their customers. And J.P. Morgan Chase recognized the criminal activity that Madoff was doing, and they just wanted to make sure that they would make money off it. And in fact, they made a fortune off Madoff, and that's why they kept him at J.P. Morgan Chase for 20 years. And there was, uh, well, I don't want to be a book spoiler. I don't like to do that. Okay, so isn't that financing criminal activity or just my naivete. No, it is. The, the Bank Secrecy Act, which again was enacted in 1970, makes it a crime for a bank to harbor a criminal. And that's exactly what J.P. Morgan Chase did. And it eventually pled guilty to two felony violations under the Bank Secrecy Act. But the problem is that nobody went to jail. Nobody was fired. Nobody even had to disgorge bonuses. So the bank was able to keep the profits it made off Madoff, and all the criminals who allowed that to happen are still at the bank, possibly committing other crimes against the public. Let me ask you, there were there are lots of personal lawsuits. People really lost everything that they had. Was the bank not implicated in any of these lawsuits? Well, <clears throat> the trustee tried to sue Madoff, uh, excuse me, tried to sue J.P. Morgan Chase, and the courts held that the trustee did not have standing. And there are, are lawsuits against J.P. Morgan Chase, but they haven't yet succeeded. So it's unclear whether they will. But that, that's why I wrote the book, because I want the public to be able to protect itself. Everyone works hard, pays their taxes, puts money away, thinking that they'll have money for retirement and to help their children. And if the large banks in this country are allowed to commit crimes and to harbor criminals, Nobody is safe. Let me ask you, I, I know you wanted to expose this, but other than that, why did you write this book? Because uh, uh, people have just been like, we put uh, uh, Madoff in jail and we've moved on to other, other scandals. Why did you want to really write the book? Well, everyone thinks Madoff is in jail for 150 years, and so everybody's safe. But J.P. Morgan Chase is the largest bank in the United States. It does business with 50% of American households. It does business with 80% of Fortune 500 companies. And yet, in the last five years, J.P. Morgan Chase has paid out $36 billion in fines and penalties for defrauding veterans, for defrauding homeowners, for defrauding credit card customers, for defrauding its depositors, if people don't realize what the risks are, they are going to be the next victims. And I wanted to help them. That's why I wrote this book. And it's available on Amazon.com. 
It's priced inexpensively because my goal is not to make money from the book, but to help other people save their own money. Well, I want my audience to stay connected because I'm giving away a copy at the end of this conversation, and I'll tell you <laughs> how. Let me ask you this. Is J.P. Morgan one of those banks, though, that is too big to fail? Because we built America on these companies, it seems, too big to fail. So can we afford for J.P. Morgan Chase to be toppled? Well, if, if someone is perpetrating a massive financial crime at J.P. Morgan Chase, do we really need that person at J.P. Morgan Chase? Why isn't that person in jail? And if J.P. Morgan Chase is so populated by criminals that the bank would collapse if the, if the criminals went to jail, then I respectfully suggest they should go to jail and the bank should be closed. Is it so much the criminals usually, I'm the CEO of my company, little teeny tiny company, you know, that, not comparing myself, but everything falls to me. Ms. Beebe, why didn't you know? Ms. Beebe, why didn't you make that decision better? So. Is the board of directors liable? Jamie, Jamie Dimon, is he liable? Or is it just the little executive in the C-suite uh, down there? Is he the one uh, uh, liable for this? Well, you know, we enacted the RICO statute in order to deal with organized crime because Carlo Gambino might order somebody to be murdered, but he wouldn't actually commit the murder. And so Congress recognized that in order to prevent organized crime, they had to have a way of holding the very senior people liable. And that's what the RICO statute does. Now, Jamie Dimon has been the president and CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase since 2004. And just in the last five years, J.P. Morgan Chase has pled guilty to three felony violations and has paid back $36 billion, with a B, in fines and penalties. Now, how is it possible that, that all of that could happen under Jamie Dimon's management? Not a single person has been fired. Now, if you ran a company and you found that someone who was working for you committed a crime, wouldn't you fire them? Wouldn't you insist <laughs> that they disgorge their profits? I would. I would. I don't think my comparison compares to J.P. Morgan Shea. I know quite a bit about J.P. Morgan Shea. Your book is fascinating, though, because you took a look. You took a risk in writing this book. Do you know that? I, I know that, but somebody has to stand up and protect the public, and that's what I've done. And I think that, you know, People have to read this and understand it, and they have to demand a government which will not sell get-out-of-jail-free cards, which is what the Obama administration did. Obama took a great deal of money from Wall Street in order to get in the White House, and, the, and what he did in return was agree that nobody on Wall Street would go to jail. And that means that all of the people in this country who work hard, pay their taxes, and hope to put money away for their retirement, those are the people who will be the next victims. Well, Helen, you are a just a brave woman in the 21st century. I love it because you said somebody has to tell the truth, and the truth will prevail. The truth is hard, but the truth will prevail. And the book is fascinating, and I would love for my audience to have a copy. If you guys go to Facebook or Twitter and click on the J.P. Madoff icon, or like those pages, I'll select somebody and send you a copy of the book so you can be as thrilled as I am about the book. This <laughs> is good read. This is really good reading. Thank it you really so much. Is. I'm so glad. Where can we find out more about you before I let you go, Helen? Well, you can go to jpmadoff.com or you can go to amazon.com and buy the book. All right, you guys, get your copy of the book. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. 